Evolve Bamboo. And I've been kind of putting away this project uh, as long as I possibly could. But um, I've been riding it through the rain many, many times. It's been holding up great. There's nothing wrong with it. I've, that's the main reason why I've been putting off this project. Uh, one of the motors was getting a little bit hotter than the other. I believe it's the right one. So I got the replacement motors. These are 140 kV motors I purchased uh, on the internet as per forums. If you guys uh, like to find out more about that, just ask in comments. But basically, I'm going to show you what it takes to make this waterproof. And I'm going to change my motors and uh, check out how my waterproofing has been holding up over all these months of uh, riding through all the bad weather. And uh, this board has been absolutely awesome for me. And I love it. I use it nearly every day. And um, I don't see myself going to any other board anytime soon. Uh, unless it's maybe a trampa board. But... Uh, not until this one breaks down or I have a, a really big reason to upgrade. Anyway, um, this is all the stuff. I'm probably going to link everything in the description. And also you can ask me in comments if I miss something. So just real quick before I uh, got this thing out and uh, go through waterproofing process. Here's what I did before. Um, I dipped the belt in a special solution let me just get it off okay so here are some mods that i did on my board to make it more resilient and uh, make it waterproof let's start with the belts first of all i uh, soaked them in this solution for at least 24 hours supposedly it like makes it stronger the belts don't break on you as often and uh, it's more resilient to uv light next um, this is a tail light I can show you it's powering on so I found that a pretty good place there it doesn't fall off and uh, shines right underneath the wheels besides that I put uh, rubber bushings as well as some copper washers between all the nuts just to kind of relieve the stress from the bumps on the bamboo deck uh, of course I covered the motors in a carbon fiber um, kind of tape let me show it to you what it looks like because some people ask so this is what the carbon fiber tape kind of looks like and I just uh, rolled it on the motors as you can see probably peel it off a little bit there it goes and then I black uh, painted it with black spray paint which has a primer and paint all in one okay um, next as you can see I put some grip tape on the bottom which has uh, seen some rough patches basically this is to protect the battery pack as well as the plastic cover underneath from uh, curbs rocks sticks whatever you might run over um, it's been great as you can see i have a black silicone um, i tripled or quadruple layered it all around as thick as i possibly could all around the the, the cover and uh, as you can see there's some white stuff coming out now that is this uh, plumber's putty that I also put on the inside and I'll show you more of that what it looks like once I open it and uh, also you could see that I put the same rubber bushings and copper washers on the bolts to kind of like soften the bumps I uh, balance the wheels it's not just gum stuck in to my wheels everybody's always asking what is that stuck to them it's just wheel balancing so I don't get the wobbles at top speeds and uh, this is what it looks like from underneath um, you can't really tell but there's some oil stains now these oil stains actually corrosion X I dipped all the electronics in corrosion X HD and uh, basically it's kind of seeping out and it's hydrophobic so water doesn't go through it but it does wear out after a few months and you should reapply it but uh, that, that's it for basically what it looks like. And as you see, there's no gaps anywhere. The compartment is sealed completely. And uh, everything looks great. This is how I mounted the tail light. In case you guys want to do the same. And it's very easy to dismount. There you go. Light. I had her on top before, but as you can see, all the mounts broke off. 
and uh, this has been working great for me at this position. So one of my biggest concerns where water could seep in is uh, these wire harnesses because they do kind of uh, move and shift with uh, every time you, you basically carve. And as you can see, there's little gaps developed. That's why it's very important not to skip any steps in waterproofing and uh, basically over-engineer the hell out of it. Anyway, let's keep going. Here's the side view. As you can see over many months of riding, the silicone seal did kind of wear off, at least at the harnesses, but everywhere else it looks great. So just real quick, I don't know if you guys noticed, but there is no screw holes anywhere on top of the board. And I put some uh, grip tape in front just because it does get scuffed. But basically the reason I covered the screw holes is because it's another point of ingress for water. And uh, even though it's just uh, grip tape, it's not watertight, but uh, it does help provide an uh, extra layer of water resistance. Anyway, let's keep going. Just to show you, um, basically I made the cutouts from grip tape to cover over the screws. And uh, these screws actually, uh, I put little O-rings um, on the bottom between the plastic layer. So there's an O-ring on the bottom as well as another O-ring on top. And I compressed it as much as I could. And then I also uh, dipped the O-rings in silicone. That would uh, also prevent water from coming in from the top through these screws. Because this is kind of uh, another major point of ingress for water. When you it's raining, you step on the board and your wet feet actually drain right through these holes all the way into the electronics. I actually fried one of my boards that way. So take uh, every precaution you can to avoid any kind of ingress of water from the top. And uh, let's keep going. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Uh, looks like with the... So this is what it looks like with the uh, grip tape covers off. off and it uh, looks in actually a pretty good condition. Doesn't look like there's like rust or too much water seeped in. But if you could kind of notice... See how the O-ring kind of sticks out? And that's exactly how I wanted it to be. So it uh, basically covers any space where the water could come in. Uh, very important. And then after you seal it, I would also suggest uh, put some Corrosion X HD just on top to make it a little bit more hydrophobic. And uh, I'm actually going to change the grip tape to a solid piece. So Hopefully they'll be even more water resilient, especially since the winter is coming. There'll be more snow, more rain, and I'm looking forward to riding all year round as long as I can. Anyway, let's keep going. So also interesting to note, uh, since it's very carvy board and it has a lot of flex, as you notice, these are kind of loose. So I would suggest every once in a while just retighten the screws to keep the water resistance at, at its max. But uh, they held up pretty well. I'm actually pretty happy. And don't over tighten it because that will uh, break the seals most likely and then you lose that water resistance. So make it fairly tight, then ride it out and then retighten everything up a little bit more. And uh, keep an eye on it, just kind of keep maintenance to keep the water resilient. Let's keep going. So I'm doing this as detailed as I possibly can so you guys could follow. This is basically the screw I unscrewed it and there's the rubber seal bushing, everything in there mushed in. You can see pieces of it coming out just because it's been months. And also when you're doing this, make sure you put something underneath. So when this drops, it doesn't just fall all the way down, but it kind of rests on the wheels. Mine is sealed, so I'll have a hard time opening it up. But uh, yeah, this is a good advice. Either use your spare wheels or some books or something. And as you can see, there's a lot of gunk in there. But hopefully no water got through. All that is usually just uh, the rubber seal or ring. Let's keep going. Now just to explain what I meant by O-rings on the screws. As you can see, there's one stuck right here. And uh, it basically goes flush against the top of the screw. And here's the O-ring set. Basically, I go for the smallest one. And then I just fit it on the screw and then compress it. Uh, I also ordered some thicker ones. Hopefully, they last a little bit longer and give a little bit more water resistance. So I'm just going to rinse the screws, make sure they're nice and clean. 
with a sponge, some mild soap, and the power tool. So there's before and there's after. And that should provide a better seal. And I will dip them in Corrosion X HD as well for more water resistance. So here we go, they're nice and shiny and clean. And next step, Corrosion X HD. Just gonna soak them up. Stuff smells great. And just let them kind of soak. They will be oily, so I'll suggest probably use gloves. Next, I'm gonna take out the diamond grip tape pattern. Even though it was great, it is losing its grip after all these months. And I have some new grip tape I'm gonna put on. Took a little while, but uh, took all the grip tape off and uh, gonna keep going. Gonna try to clean all this uh, gooey residue off, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, next, how do I get inside here, even though it's so well sealed? I'm going to try to pick at it over here and then just try to peel it off. So here's a good example of what I mean by a plumber's putty. First, I have the silicone layer on top to kind of provide a general sealant. And then inside, I have this putty that's oozing out because of pressure. I put it into, um, like I'll show you, like a cylindrical shape all around as a gasket all around the cover. And basically, when you compress it, all the extra stuff comes out, which means water can't come in. Anyway, let's keep going. And here we go. It's not pretty, but it did the job great. If you can see, there's oily residue. That is a Corrosion X. Everything's fine. There's really no water ingress. Um, it's, as I said, uh, not pretty, but it does the job. So basically, I have this internal seal of the plumber's putty and uh, it's you kind of roll it into a long tube and make a gasket out of it and then you compress it between uh, bamboo deck and the cover and then squeeze everything extra out even it out and uh, seal it with a uh, silicone and uh, did great and I'm gonna do the same thing all over again once I swap these motors and uh, clean everything up and it's uh, a lot of cleaning but uh, looking forward to uh, plugging in new motors and trying them out and getting it back in in uh, running again <laughs> not that it wasn't running before but definitely can't run it in this condition also what I forgot to note but uh, I also believe it's fairly important you guys notice uh, there's a rubber o-ring on each one of the bolt um, locations and uh, this one see how it comes off I basically crazy glued it so under compression it uh, creates a watertight seal as well so I had an o-ring here between the cover and the bamboo deck as well as an o-ring on top of the bolt so over engineered a little bit but uh, it did great in case you guys curious this is what the underside looks like uh, these are just uh, silicone cushioning spots I put in there so battery doesn't vibrate. Still have a lot of cleaning. This is the cover of the battery and all the electronics. Also must be cleaned. Here's a mini update. It's uh, kind of hard to take off the silicone. But I'm using some Windex and scraper tools. Slowly but surely get in there. Okay, a little bit later. This is uh, as good as I could clean it. Pretty much just uh, clean the, the seam. So I can make a nice seal over here. As well as cleaned and uh, used what are they called? Sandpaper or the same grip tape to roughen up the edges for the sealant to take a better grip and uh, prevent water from getting in. I'll show you next step in a second. All right, next step, I'm gonna crazy glue these O-rings onto each one of these screw mount holes and uh, just regular crazy glue. 
and I use the alcohol swab, cotton swab, to just clean any kind of dust or debris from the top of each one. Make sure it's a nice clean area to work with. Show you next step in a second. So now I just take crazy glue. I put uh, a few dots. And then I take the, the seal and all done. Let me see if I can do this while holding the phone. Try to center it and just put it like that and uh, make all the holes. What this will do is uh, create a nice water seal around the screw hole and hopefully uh, pre prevent any water from getting in as well as everything else. All right, here's what it looks like with all of them glued. Next, I have uh, some leftover neoprene. It's pretty much like what wetsuits are made out of. And I'm going to uh, make a seal all around. If you have like enough of it, I would probably make the whole thing. But since I don't, just going to make a small strips all around. All right, so the neoprene seal is in place if it's pretty good i can cut out those extra pieces later and uh, that big square piece is in there just so the wires don't uh, make noise and rattle getting closer okay some update the motors are changed uh pretty much ready to do the seals and uh, put everything back I'd probably best to plug everything in and test it first before sealing everything up in case something's wrong. I don't have to break the seal and redo the whole cleaning process, which was uh, not a lot of fun. As you guys can see, there's a lot of mess. But hey, that's what a project is like. All right, get back to you in a second. And uh, another good uh, pointer, don't forget to label your motors and connectors. So I got number two, number one, motor number one, number two, and then the controllers for it as well. All right, looks like we got a connection and uh, we can do a first test. Let's see how it goes. Nice, they spin in the same direction. Everything looks good. Nice and quiet. Brakes. Love it. New motors are awesome. All right. Um, going to try to seal everything up and get back to you. All right. So here's the one of the secret seals that I'm making is basically plumber's party, putty or whatever you call it. And uh, this is non-staining one. Um, should be pretty good. Once it gets compressed, it should make a really good seal. And then eventually I'll make a loop around each one of those all rings and uh, I'll take a video I'll show you guys but uh, looks good so far let's keep going. all right so here's what I meant uh, put potty around the uh, all rings and it's pretty much ready to seal from the bottom and then I'll show you how to seal it on top all right so here's what I meant uh, put potty around the uh, all rings and it's pretty much ready to seal from the bottom and then I'll show you how to seal it on top all right, so I just want to show you how uh, I put the rubber seal around the screw and I'm going to tighten everything up and seal. And then uh, there's a little gap here. I'm going to fill that in and then I'll get back to you. All right, so this is the bottom side. See how the putty is oozing out, which is good. It's making a good seal. That means that it's coming from the inside and the water will not get in. Now I'm going to use the silicone to seal it. And you'll see what that looks like next. All right, put on my new grip tape. Looks nice and solid. And uh, let's see underneath. I was doing it while the first layer of electrical tape was drying out. And then I'm going to beef it up with some silicone and a couple of more layers to make it more waterproof. Looking good so far. Okay, a few more coats of uh, silicone electrical tape. And uh, should be totally waterproof now. And then eventually I'll just uh, put 
corrosion X into the holes of the motors and uh, make the internals of them waterproof as well or water resistant and uh, that's it guys that's how you do it it's not easy not a small project but once it's done should be good to go in all weather